I guess we could start now. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to PM Ready's Life and Leadership Lessons from the Military Event in honor of Memorial Day. Um, we are thrilled to have such a diverse group of um, attendees joining us. Um, so before we dive in into our program, um, next slide. Yeah, so before we dive in, um, let's we can go over some uh, quick few um, housekeeping items just to ensure a smooth experience for everyone. So this meeting will be recorded, and so you know you can revisit the valuable insights that you will that will be shared today. Um, and please hold your questions um, until the discussion session, or feel free to type um, them in the chat as we go along. Um, keep your microphones yeah. muted. Uh, yeah. unless you are speaking to minimize background noise. And I know I have a lot of background noise and I apologize for that. We um, also kindly ask you to complete the post-event survey to help us improve our future events. Um, a reminder to all PMI certified members that you will receive a one free PDU for participating, sorry, uh, for participating in today's event. And lastly, we are able to work with school to provide service link hours to students who attend. Okay, next slide. Uh, yeah. So now let me introduce our organization. Um, PM Ready is a proud to be uh, it's proud to be the uh, nation's first youth-led, youth-driven 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to empowering the next generation with essential project management skills. We believe in, in making project leadership, learning accessible, engaging, and meaning, meaningful for students from all backgrounds. Um, our initiatives include virtual events, youth mentorship, um, student competitions, and also virtual camps. Furthermore, we are committed to promoting social equity and inclusion, as well as sustainable development through all our efforts. Okay, next slide. And now it gives me the great pleasure to introduce our panel moderator for this evening, um, Om Kulakarni. Om is not only a PM Ready ambassador, but also a dedicated student in grade eight um at Inglewood Middle School in Greater Seattle, specifically from the city of Sammamish. Um, Om has shown exceptional leadership and enthusiasm in promoting project management among his peers. So Om, take it away. Oh uh, yes. Uh thank you, Evelyn. Um so as uh, uh Evelyn said, my name is Om and I will be the panel moderator for today's um event. And uh thank you for joining us. Uh, just uh, for an icebreaker to start uh, the event, I would, um, if you would um, kindly please uh, type in the chat, if you are a, a student from a student uh, from kindergarten to 12th grade or a college student, uh, could you please type S in the chat? If you are a PMI certified member, type P in the chat. And if you're just a uh, adult, adult learner, please type A in the chat. And uh, I think uh, we got our uh, all our chats in. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, let's move forward. So our uh, today's guest is uh, Captain Anthony Williams Jr. Uh, Captain Anthony Williams Jr. is a, a U.S. Army officer, an Army congressional. Uh, Aliyah Jean, an author and a uh, speaker. Um, he has a Master of Policy Management from Georgetown University and an MS Logistics Management uh, from the Florida Institute of Technology. Uh, this is his book, if you, um, the assignment, uh, you can purchase this on Amazon if you would like to. And uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Captain Williams, would you like to add, in, add anything about yourself to this? 
Uh, yeah. Hey, first and foremost, I want to say uh, good afternoon to everyone on the call. I, I'm Captain Anthony Williams. I am uh, originally from the state of Georgia, uh, from a small town, uh, Augusta, Georgia, uh, home of the Masters, if uh, anybody plays golf. Uh, but that's that's where I was born and raised. Uh, I went to Fort Valley State University. It's uh, located in Fort Valley, Georgia. It's a historical black college and university. And there, uh, my life changed um, within 30 days. I actually um, graduated. I commissioned into the military as an officer. I got engaged to my girlfriend, which is my wife now, and we had a son. So there was time for a family, and then I went into my career as well. So um, it's it's a lot to unpack as we dive into the story. Um, Om, I'm I'm here for you with any question that you ask. And I, I'm just, I'm super, super excited to be here. And I'm so proud of everything that PM Ready is doing, uh, in particular for the youth, because I'm, I'm, I'm tapped in with the youth. And I will also say that as I go through this, I spent a lot of time uh, volunteering uh, with various organizations within the Washington, D.C. metro area and really focus on ages um, 10 to 17 years old. So, I'm, 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 again, I'm excited and I'm just truly happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for joining us today, Captain Williams. Um, so our first question of today will be about um, Captain Williams' uh, career journey and his uh, current role. So I'll let you take it away. Okay, awesome. Thank you again. Um, so then my career journey, uh, so commissioned into the military as a logistics officer. Uh, my first duty station was Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Um, there I served as a platoon leader. Uh, maintenance control officer, and mind you, I'm, I'm also a dad and a husband as well. And this is taking you back 10 years ago. Um, so from there, I went to a, a defense logistics agency in Philadelphia, which is a really cool assignment. Um, people, I, I really joined the military to see the world. That was part of it. And another reason was, <laughs> as we be honest, as I'm honest on this call, and I wanted the questions and answer everything to be just full transparency. I really joined it to um, impress my wife's dad, which was my girlfriend at the time, her dad. Um, I ended up telling him that I was thinking about doing ROTC, and he gave me one of those smiles and a, a pat on the back. He was like, I think that's a really good decision for you. And at that time, I was only about 19 years old, and I, I didn't know it was going to change my life forever. And wow, and it was really one of the best decisions I've truly, truly ever made. So to bring you back to Fort Campbell, my first assignment, going to Philadelphia, uh, went to Southern Virginia, and then we I seriously moved before I got to Washington, D.C., which was three years ago. My family and I had moved about six times in eight years. So we was really on the move, really having to adjust. Um, everybody practicing something I call resiliency, right, when things you know, don't necessarily go your way and you still are adapting to these different environments. And I'm super proud of my children and my wife uh, for just being with me on this journey. And it has been very interesting. Um, so and, and then I, I, I was really blessed. I entered into a program where I went to Georgetown University uh, to my core school of public policy there. And I was able to obtain a master's degree in public policy. And from there, uh, which was probably one of the most, most exciting years I've had uh, just being in the military, as I had the opportunity to really just be myself and sit in class with people who, and then put, you know, essentially put the uniform away and just go down to civilian, to regular attire and be able to talk about race, be able to talk about religion, um, you name it, everything under the sun was a topic. And I just I really enjoyed that time there and uh, just sitting with people in my class who are world leaders uh, and just what they brought to the field and just taking an assignment home, reading the assignment and then coming in to discuss it and seeing it from a totally different view from what I read. And I thought that's where I really was able to uh, just grow, grow as a leader and grow as a human being and just essentially just be more understanding. Uh, sometimes the army, the military can keep you a little restricted on your views. You know, you got to be apolitical. You can't necessarily talk about religion in the office. You can't. Talk, there's a lot of things you can't talk about. But I, I truly feel that there are things that bring us closer together than what separates us. And that's that's everybody. 
and uh, going around the world with the military, I've seen just so many commonalities. And I just, I'm truly, I'm happy to be in the military. And I'm just, I'm thankful for that Georgetown experience as well. And then the next year, uh, which was last year, I had an opportunity to serve in the Pentagon. And there I uh, was in forces division uh, where, I, and I'll, I'll talk about a project later on, um, I'm sure that I was able to oversee and really lead, but it was pretty effective for all of the military. I was in the, in the joint staff. And then um, that right now I'm working as a army congressional liaison um, in the House of Representatives. So I have a pretty unique portfolio uh, working with uh, multiple uh, different entities within the House of Representatives. And I primarily focus on the states of North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. But I, I do touch the other states as well that, that go across our nation uh, from the East Coast to the West Coast. And I get a chance to lead some something called congressional delegations where I take members of Congress around the world and we go for fact finding, um, oversight. And I've had opportunity to really go to from countries in Southeast Asia to Europe to you know everywhere. And it's really been a great opportunity to just be a part of something bigger than myself. And that's where that's where I am right now. So I hope that that answers the question. Again, I, I'm really, really thankful to be here. Oh uh, yeah, that was a uh, great Captain Williams. Um seems like you've had a pretty unique and interesting journey. Yes. Um, so our next question is, uh, what is the project that you feel most proud about uh, within the past uh, three to five years? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, I will say a project that I had, and I'm going to bring something that's outside of which, what someone may be thinking with being in the military. Uh, I've had a chance to lead some really cool stuff, but it's something that I did that really really touched my heart and I felt like I made a difference is um, last summer I had a chance to lead a summer camp uh, for the youth and that was between the ages of I will say between the grades of about seventh grade and 12th grade and um, I had about 52 young men it was all boys camp um, from in these these young men from within our area of Washington DC and we basically went out to the woods and we no phones, none of that. And we actually like focused in on um, shooting BB guns, archery, um, swimming, um, camping. And we, we were camping in the woods. Um, and we also went to a courthouse. This was a really good moment. Went to a courthouse where we had lawyers, judges, law enforcement that came out to talk about different scenarios. And um, that, was, that was amazing. And uh, the way that they broke it down and made it super easy for the kids to understand. And I'm sure that in the future, we're gonna have uh, multiple attorneys that come from, from that camp that week of being outside and just going out to the courthouse. And I took them to the Pentagon where they got tour, a full full VIP tour of the Pentagon. And uh, we had multiple general officers come out and talk to them and they got a chance to take pictures and ask questions, get answers. That was amazing. We went to Top Golf as well. And uh, we was able to raise over fifty thousand dollars prior to this moment, and the, the Zoom calls and the contracts and everything. I just see everything going coming to fruition, and I, I was just—it was really. And my my son who was out there as well, and he had a great time, and it just really touched my heart that last day to have the camper stand up and talk about the impact that was made on them from the camp, and to hear the parents. And my son, uh, he's a little younger. He you know, than uh, everybody else, but I really wanted him to get that experience. And um, he was raising his hand the whole time, like, Daddy, pick me, pick me, pick me. And I'm like kind of going over him because sometimes he may say something a little crazy. So I'm going over, I'm calling on everybody else. And at the end, I say, uh, my son's name is Trey. I say, Trey, uh, wh what do you have for us? And he stood up, 10 years old now. He stood up and he uh, said that he was so thankful for this opportunity and it just, it made an impact in his life. He thanked everybody, thanked all the campers. And he just like, I can't wait till next year. I can't wait to do this again. And um, it just, it really touched me. When I got in the car, I couldn't help, but to, I just, I looked down and I started crying. 
as I was riding. I just, I was driving, I was just, tears are flowing. And I hadn't probably cried since like 1996, right? And this is last year. So I'm like, it's, it's probably some dust and stuff coming out as a prior. And I just, I got home and my wife asked me, she said, so how was the camp? And I was, I said that, oh man, it's just, I just bust out crying again, right there in front of her. And I was just like, I was just so happy to have that moment and just see the smiles on young men. So that was, the, that's a project because it took a year for, for us to put together, raise the money, get the contracts and get every, all my counselors involved on it. And um, it just to, to see it play out the way it did, I just, I, I felt very thankful and grateful to be in that moment. So that was, that's my favorite project. Oh, that certainly seems like a great project. And I hope you can uh, do that one more, uh, many more times. Thank you. So our next question is, how did you, uh, how did your growth experience shape your professional journey? Yeah, I, I think that uh, Boy Scouts of America uh, contributed in, in multiple ways to uh, my career being in the Army. Like when you talk about, because sometimes you're going to have to go out in the field, um, no matter your branch, you're going to spend some time out in the woods. And I feel pretty comfortable uh, being out there just based off of those skills that I learned as a scout. Cub Scout, Boy Scout, all the way up. Um, and I will also say being a company commander. So I, being a company commander, I had 150 soldiers that fell within my company. And um, honestly, everybody come in the military, we come from all different walks of life, right? So I am a product of a single parent household where my mom was a nurse working multiple jobs. My father was in prison. Um, I'm the oldest, I have two younger sisters. So, and then my grandparents, they helped me out a lot in life. My grandmother and grandfather. Uh, my grandfather actually served in the military for 12 years as a military policeman. So he was a truly a positive role model uh, for me as I grew up. But I didn't have that dad uh, that kind of be there with me. So my experience is, is different. And so I share that experience with other people. But you got, in the military, you have people that come from big, big cities to small towns. You know, yeah, I mix in between rural, urban, you name it, from everywhere. Um, so working with 150 people from all walks of life was probably the most satisfying experience I could have. Just and was challenging at times to be able to relate, to be able to uh, just make sure that what I was saying and it made sense. You know, so um, and then the challenge that I had is that my company was responsible for. We were down at Fort Bragg, which is called Fort Liberty now in North Carolina, and everybody would jump out of airplanes, right? So we, that's what I did for two two years. We would jump out of airplanes and do all this stuff. But my company in particular had to pack the parachutes for everybody down there. Tough job. Very nerve-wracking at times. Um, it was, yeah, it got, it got kind of crazy. But I will also say I'm truly proud of the soldiers in that unit because as COVID kicked off, Right. Everybody was it was a lot of chaos going on across the, the nation while COVID was at its height. And uh, we built a relationship. Right. So the same rules from elementary school, they still apply today. And that's that relationships matter. Right. Relationships matter. And we had a relationship with North Carolina State University and they created this like N95 material. And that N95 material, we were actually uh, drive our vehicles up there, grab the N95 material, come back to our facilities, and we would use our sewing machines. I had a bunch of sewers because as the parachutes came up, right, we would sew them up and get them back out there. So we got the N95 material, big balls of it, and we would actually create COVID masks out of those balls. And um, we got those those masks everywhere to try to stop the spread of the virus. And it showed you that you didn't necessarily have to be overseas to make a difference for your nation. You could do it right here in the United States of America. So, and I was really proud as Washington Post, New York Times, AP, everybody, uh, ABC, CNN, everybody came out and was interviewing uh, the, my soldiers. And I just, it was, it was truly a proud moment. And I would say that tr that was one of those times where it shaped uh, my professional journey um, to go forward to, to where I am now and what's coming in the future. Yeah, that's uh totally great. Um, it sounds like 
uh, those experiences really made you to the man you are today. Thank you. Um, so our next question is, uh, since your childhood, are there any milestones in your leadership development journey? Yes, I will, I will say uh, passing the PMP exam was a huge milestone for me. And I, I'm sure we got some uh, PMP certified uh, personnel people on, on the call. That was that was it was very tough. Uh, but just putting in you had to put in the work. Um, I, I had a great study um, material that I utilized prior to taking the exam. And I would just, you know, as I have three kids at home to kind of peel away, go study, um, and maybe have my wife ask me some questions. And I'm uh, using a lot of time on YouTube, watching the videos. I did some crash courses as well. And I uh, just, that, that was tough, but it, I think it's something that I truly needed to get to, you know, the point where what's coming in the future as I utilize those project management skills. They're, they're so important, uh, especially for you all at, at your age now, middle school and high school. And I, one that kind of sticks out is just being able to identify and mitigate risk, right? There, you like I can't think of a better thing that you can learn right now as a teenager than identifying risk and then what can I do to mitigate those risks so they don't happen. As you experience peer pressure, uh, things coming in front of you that, you didn't expect, right? We talked about that resiliency piece, but we got to look at it and see, okay, maybe I shouldn't go down that road. Maybe I should not do this or that. And you know, whatever's popping to your mind right now, that's probably what you probably should not be doing, ever messing with. And I'm sure you're not doing it, but you've identified that risk and uh, you're doing whatever you can to ensure that it does not happen, right? It's, it's mitigated completely. And identifying those stakeholders, your, your parents, um, your teachers, your coaches, uh, the guidance counselor, principal, and and using them right to you know to ensure that you are successful because people we want to see you all succeed. We all want to see you su su uh, get to the next level. So make sure that you identify those stakeholders and just uh, make sure that you utilize them as much as possible. Uh, your village, the people that are there to ensure that you achieve and get to the next level. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. I totally agree with uh, that. Um, so our next question is, um, could you tell us more about your uh, aforementioned book that were uh, the assignment and what led to you writing this, uh, the book? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the assignment. <laughs> so uh, this is one of those things that I ha I had to do, right? I, I had to do it. I'll tell you why. So I was, again, I was down in North Carolina. Um, jumping out of airplanes, doing all this crazy stuff. And um, God, he spoke to me, right? He spoke to me He's like, hey, you know, you need to start putting this stuff down on paper, your life lessons, right? The things that you're learning as an adult, uh, because right at this point I had two kids and if I was to die tomorrow, what would they know me for? Like what, what lessons would I leave them if I passed away abruptly? And I know that may sound sound different, right? That we don't really think about, but he threw another sign at me. I was at the gas station on military installation. And as I walked to the line, I had some chips and I think apple juice, I love apple juice. And I, I got to the line, it was a lady, she had her head down, like the whole time I was looking at, I was like, oh, why she, and this is the cashier. She had her head down, older lady. She had to be probably in my, her, her late sixties. And I got up there. She still had her head down. And I'm, she's like still, you know, checking me out with the, you know, the, the drink and the chips and I'm paying her. And then she lifts her head up and I'm looking into her eyes. And, and this is real. She said, are you still working on that book? I was like, what? I, what? Because I know what I, in my mind, I'm like, wow, OK, she. I'm, I know what she's talking about. And I, but I asked, I said, what are you talking about? She's like that leadership book. And I, I said, ma'am, I'm going to work on it right now. I'm going to get on it. Because God, he'll, he'll put some signs in front of you. And he did. And for me to capture that, um, I just started jotting things down, jotting things down. And as I was at Georgetown, I came on an opportunity to do a side job, side hustle. It was super easy. Just basically 
just I would sit there, right? And uh, in this job, I had a lot of time, right? A lot of time to the time where I was like, you know what? I need to use it and be as productive as possible. So I would jot down notes and I reached out to someone. I was talking to them and it was like, hey, you need to go ahead and start. Actually, let's start typing this up. Let's put it out. And I ended up, you know, 10 chapters. And then I started just adding to it. And I would, this would be like three months. I'm just throwing things out. And I'm telling you, like it, it ended up like just God was like kind of like speaking through me as I was typing this book out. And it's basically a story of two individuals, two siblings, Brian and Alexis. They go, and this is kind of based off my personal story as well, but they go on a journey, right? Their father is released from prison, but he never returns home. He left two years prior to this moment. And um, he went to prison, you know, for whatever reason. And they actually had a, a decent middle lifestyle, right? Middle-class lifestyle. But when he left, uh, the mom ended up struggling financially and they had to go down quite a bit, right? Uh, to, you know, below the poverty line, lower social economic status. And uh, they're like, you know what? I'm tired of this, man. I just heard that my dad is out. It's time for us to go find him. But I don't, I don't know why he didn't come home. What's going on? And they went on a journey to go find their father. And along that journey, they meet these different characters that teach them life lessons, lessons in mental health, lessons in conflict resolution, lessons in physical fitness, finances, different multiple lessons that they learn along this journey from different characters, right? And they all play a part in them getting to their father. So uh, it's, again, that's one of the books that, that's that's the book that I've written. And I'm telling you, like, it's, it's impacted some people. And I, I'm just, I'm super proud of that project and, and getting it out there and just being able to make a difference in lives. And uh, thank you. Thank you for asking me that question. And I, I appreciate you allowing me to talk about that. Yeah, no, no problem. And I'm definitely going to look into this book and try to get it and read it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It was uh, for some time, it was the uh, number one teen ebook on Amazon. Uh, it was the number one book for homelessness and poverty. And it was also the number one book for school and education um, yeah. on Amazon. Uh, I think Amplify? It's on, on Amazon. I, oh, I heard Amplify. Sorry. That's oh, sorry. Yep, yep, yep. On Amazon. So if, if anybody, if you're able to type out Anthony Williams Jr., uh, the assignment, it'll pop up and you'll see that cover. I appreciate it. Okay. So our next question is, what is the biggest challenge for you? And uh, did it change over time? That's a good question. Um, I will say the biggest challenge for me is that sometimes I get really laser focused on my job that I, unfortunately, right, I forget about being home with my family. I do. I get, I get locked in. I'm, I'm, at, in, I'm getting better with it now. But it was pretty bad three years ago. Again, when I was in company command down there in North Carolina, I would be I would be in the office sometimes like 1 a.m. doing work. And I, I'm thankful that my wife didn't say, hey, forget you. I'm going elsewhere uh, because I was just like grinding, man, because I was just so focused on I got to be the best. I got to be the best. I got to be the best that I was forgetting about really what's important at home. And um, I made those adjustments. And I remember telling as I was leaving out of that organization. I told everybody, I said, hey, from this moment on, I'm going to do everything I can for my family. Every decision will be based off of my family. And uh, it's been good. And, you know, I still got my family uh, right now. But that was a challenge, just trying to separate uh, work from home life. And um, I, I made those adjustments. And I'm glad I'm truly I'm glad I did. Yep. And uh, it did change over time as well. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so, uh, our next question is, how does managing a project in the military differ from managing, uh, managing a project in other environments? Yeah, I, I think it's similar. I, I, again, the project that I, I managed, uh, in the military recently last year, it was something called the Global Posture Executive Council's Military Construction One Endless. And that's a whole lot of words for basically, I had a team of people that outrank me, actually in the military of all branches and civilians. Um, and we would essentially receive projects from all over the world, you, like you name it, all over the world uh, that have some uh, Department of Defense equity 
And we would rack and stack those projects based off of costs. Uh, how does it affect the guidance? Sorry, excuse me. Yep. How does it affect the guidance uh, from, you know, the Secretary of Defense? Um, I mean, it was it was a lot of different categories that we did. And uh, we started off with a kickoff meeting, right? I think we learned that in PMP. Uh, we we uh, actually, stakeholders were identified early on. We identified those risks. And then basically the, the cost schedule performance as well uh, for those different projects. So I would say it, military projects and projects outside of the military, very similar. The, the basics, the standards are all the same, all the same. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really the same. And I would truly encourage everyone, if you have the opportunity, uh, to if you if you haven't uh, to take the the P PMP um, exam uh, from PMI and receive that knowledge and then just use it and spread it to other people because those pro every we, we deal with projects in every field uh, whether it's the military whether it's in uh, different business related um, fields you name it we all got projects so I think that going through the course it was truly helpful and then also just taking an exam. Um, just gaining knowledge. I think it's going to be it's beneficial for the rest of my life. That's great. I think um, finding lessons that you can use for all of your life. Yeah. Uh, so our next question is, which project management methodologies did you use more often in man managing projects in the military environment? Yeah, I, I will say the traditional um i've seen quite a bit i was saying sometimes it's a hybrid of traditional and agile the project that i previously mentioned uh, where we're rack and stacking those projects from across the world that was more of a traditional there that was something that we had been doing for years uh putting together and i i was able to fall into the seat and i just used the same foundation that we had the people changed but the the methodology really didn't um in the steps that it took to get to a success uh, didn't truly really change. So that was more of a traditional project. And I, I've dealt with agile projects as well in the past. Uh, the camp capital was, you know, the camp that I was mentioning uh, that we did last year, that was that was pretty agile for the, for the most part. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been multiple projects that I've done dealing with both, but primarily I, I see a lot of traditional. And, but I do have a project coming soon um, that, uh, and. I, I just want to go ahead and tell you. So I'm, I'm going into, I'm, I switched over to the acquisition field in the army and it's going to be totally different from everything that I've done. I've been out, you know, with the soldiers, uh, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. I'm in the field, I'm traveling, I'm doing all that. Now I'm going to be more on the corporate side, really using a lot of those project management uh, methodologies. And I get a chance to oversee a project that's going to be totally new to the army, never before done. I get a chance to manage cost schedule performance, uh, risk, all that stuff. And it's going to be truly, truly exciting. I'll start in August on that one. And it's going to take some time to us to get to where we need to be and build the team. But I'm really looking forward to this opportunity. It's, it's going to be it's going to be different for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so our next question is, and I believe you touched base on this a little bit before. Um, what roles uh, did what roles did your mentors, sponsors, and role models and allies play in your life as you advanced in your career? Could you share some stories with us? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, like this, I would not be where I am without those that came before me, and uh, they didn't shut the door. Right. They kept the door open or they, they reached their hand out and they grabbed us like, hey, Anthony, come on, man. I got you. Let me let me show you this. Let me show you that. And I'm, I'm truly I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, mentors. I was just with my mentor uh, yesterday as his son was graduating from from high school. It was it meant a lot for me to be there because I want to express to his son what he has meant to me as as a mentor and as a sponsor and as a, as a coach. Uh, he, he's every place he's told me like, hey, Anthony, you know, my first master's degree was from the Florida Institute of Technology and Logistics Management. And the reason I went into that field is because he told me, he was like, hey, Anthony, this is a free master's. Obviously, you got to do the work, right? But the military will pay for it. And I, I want you to take advantage of this. 
and I did. And man, I learned so much uh, that's applied for my job. And then they also say, hey, I need you to go to Georgetown. I went to Georgetown. Now, I will say this, role models will only take you so far. Yeah, I, I, I believe in them. I believe in mentors, but you still got to have a mind of your own and you got to be able to have, be able to ask those questions and be able to just not just be tunnel vision, right? Like what I was mentioning, you got to be able to look to the left and right and just what's going to be best for you. And what if you have a family, what's going to be best for you and your family? And the jump that I made is a little off the, the path. Uh, I've never seen anybody do this before, but it's something that I, you know, I just, I, in my gut, right? That's why I think it's going to come down to at the end of the day, right? What do you feel in your gut? You got to make a decision, all right? And for my gut is telling me, hey, I need to go towards this path that I just jumped on. So I'm telling you, mentors, they they matter. They do, they do matter. It's good to seek the advice. Even if you're thinking about doing something else, even if you're going to go a different direction, still, still get the advice uh, from, from someone who just may be able to give you, a, just be a sounding board for you to vent to and be able to poke holes in whatever uh, decision that you're looking to take. Uh, but I, I will say mentorship has been everything for me. Um, I got a lot of people that's been looking out. So, and it's only right that I pay it for. That's the biggest piece. Pay it for, pay it for to the next generation that's coming up. And I, I spend time like this right here, talking to you all. Like this is, it's so important to me to pay it for because you all are the future. And I'm looking forward to just following PM Ready and seeing where the organization goes. I'm already super happy and excited for what's already taking place but I already know it's going to trampoline and go to a, a even higher level and direction. So yeah, I would say, yeah, definitely mentors are super, super important for you all. Yeah. And um, I totally agree with that as uh, mentors can help you and guide you in, in different types of ways. Thank you. Um, so uh what would you like to share with our audience, um, particularly uh, uh, the youth, as you reflect in your leadership successes? Yes, uh, I will say this. You have to have vision, right? Wherever, if you do not, if you're middle school or high school and you do not see yourself walking across the stage right now, then you're wrong, right? We got to, I understand we're going to be locked in. We're going to be doing our work in eighth grade, right, or ninth grade, or continues, we're going to be doing our work, but we got to just be able to look out a little bit. And then you kind of like backwards plan from there. And uh, the vision piece is so, so important. I do want to give a story uh, about, and I'm sure you probably already heard it, but I, I will certainly, I want to share it with the group if anyone has not it. It's uh, like the Tom Wilson, Bill Johnson story. So Tom Wilson and Bill Johnson, they were pretty good friends. Pretty good friends. Uh, Tom and Bill, they met on the railroad, right? They both were working on the railroad. And Tom comes by one day where you have Tom is the owner of the railroad company. But then you and then you have Bill uh, that's the uh, the manager. So they, they end up seeing each other. You know, he's with his team. He's managing a section. He sees Tom. Tom says, hey, man, what's going on? How you doing? They shake hands. And um, he walks away. They have a brief conversation to walk away. The manager's team, right, of, of Tom, they, oh, excuse me, Bill, they asked him, said, hey, man, how do you know the owner? And he was like, yeah, yeah, we, we actually go way back. This, this was like my good friend. We were here working here in this same spot, really, years ago, 20 years ago. And the team asked the manager, they said, well, if, if you, this is 20 years ago, why why are you still right here? And he's there. He's making a lot more money. He's doing a lot with his time. What What's going on? And Bill had to humble himself. Of course, he did. And he said, you know what? To be honest with you, Tom, he always had vision. He did. While I was focused on the tracks, he was focused on creating a railroad company. And they said, what do you mean? Well, they said Tom was always looking out. He was always observing. He didn't get locked in on what was in front of him. He was looking to the left and to the right and asking questions, right? 
always asking questions. Do not never be afraid to ask questions. And that's why he was able to succeed and go far. And Bill was pretty much right there. And now he did he elevate? Yes, he did. He went to a management position. I'm sure he's proud of that. But the reason I want to share that story with you all is because you have to ensure that you're thinking long term. You have to think, where do I see myself? Not just tomorrow. But where do I see myself in five years? Where do I see myself in 10 years? What am, what am I doing further out than that? Start thinking about that. All right. You have to think about that. That's that's the story. I, I mean, that's a reflection I want to leave with you. Um, I also want to leave with you that when you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. All right. Stay ready. Know your goals. That's very true. I, I like that from the from the chat. But when you stay ready, you have to get ready. Put the time in now to prepare. I had a leader once say that preparation is the separation between winning and losing. And if you fail to prepare, then you, I mean, honestly, you've already prepared to, to, to fail uh, in general. So make sure that you're always using those time, you know, when instead of being on our phones all day doing stuff, we got to put those phones away, social media and stuff, put it away and get back to reading, go back to journaling, get back to uh, spending time outside, you know, meditating, things like that. We, we got to keep our minds sharp. We truly do. And but do what you can to prepare for whatever you want to do in life. Whatever that is that popped into your mind, just make sure you're spending time preparing. And that at the end of the day, when you stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. No, I'm ready right now. All right. And it's going to come down to beating them to the spot because guess what? It's competition. Whatever field that you're going into is other people that want to be there. No doubt. They want to be in, the, in your shoes. They're looking at you right now like, hey, I can do it better. They want to beat you there. They might be stronger. They might be faster. They might be smarter, but they cannot beat you in effort. They cannot do that. You have to give 110% effort. Every, every time you have to beat them to the spot. That's what it's going to take. So please stay ready. And uh, the last thing I want to leave with you all uh, in regards to those uh, leadership lessons is that you have to, you have to show yourself grace. You, you have to, you, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. No one, no one is perfect, right? You have to just show yourself some grace and understand that like, I gave it my effort. I prepared. I did everything. And in life, you're not always going to get pats on the back. Everybody's not going to come to you, OM, and say, hey, great job on that. Great job. No, man. You have to continue to give 100% effort. And whatever it is, however it plays out, I know that I tried my best. And you and be able to sleep well with that. Give yourself some grace. L release all the pressure. You got to let, let it go. I know I go through it. Uh, my wife, we, the kids, my friends, we all go through, we have a lot of pressure. It is what it is, but we got to make sure that we're showing ourselves grace as well. And we, if you have somebody around you that's going through it as well, just let them know like, hey, you're doing a great job. All right. You're doing, you're doing good. Let them know like, hey man, just, we got to let the pressure go a little bit. You're doing great. Always, always keep that at the forefront. So again, vision. And I, when I think of vision, I think of a, a, a quote from Albert Einstein and that's that imagination is a preview of what's to come and what first it starts here all right so that vision piece is important when you stay with it you ain't got to get ready and then showing yourself grace keep those three i think you'll be very impactful uh, it'll be impactful in your life and others as well yeah i totally agree with that and um uh yeah i think it's smart to think about your future and just not the present yeah um so talking about the future um what's the future for you i know you touched base on this but um is there anything like more specific you wanted to talk about uh, yeah i'm actually about to head to alabama um i'll be in alabama for some some weeks i'm training on the job i'm going into and then i come back up here to the dc area and where I'm going to be taking the job on um, on a military installation, and I'll be a project manager over this new project that we're looking to get into the military 
um, there's going to be a sensor, right? We're trying to look super far out from different areas of you know, where, wherever we, we plan on uh, locating with this particular piece of equipment. And uh, this is, is definitely going to, I think it can change the way that the Army is moving in regards to uh, surveillance and reconnaissance missions. And I'm, I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to this project. So that's what's next. Um, my wife and I, we also have uh, a mental health therapy practice and we're just looking to just, you know, just really let us help um, moms. That's that's a huge piece, especially moms that may be suffering from postpartum depression. And uh, just really like just we want to be able to help moms on that on that journey and help them in just every, in every every way possible. So that's what my wife, again, three kids and it's primarily her focus. I help out with admin. Uh, some of the tech stuff. Uh, but again, we're just that particular practice, mental health, we just really want to help moms and uh, so they can be able to be uh, help their families as well. I think uh, that's great. And it definitely will help the community in what you're doing. Um, so our um, that was the last question. But now when there's a Q&A that we have set up. So I'm looking through the chat and there are some questions here that we can just start off with. So um, someone has mentioned, do you plan to write your next book anytime soon? Mm, that's a good question. I am. Um, I think what I may do is get into film. I have an idea. Um, so again, uh, about me, my I love my family. I do. I, I love my family that's down in Georgia is what I'm, I'm, I'm hitting on. Uh, where I came up with everybody's down there in Georgia. I'm, I'm in D.C. area. and But I've gone through some things uh, mentally where I, I question. I'm like, wow, do you, do you all? I know you love me, but to go four years in a row without a birthday call, you know, hey, just happy birthday or kids not receiving that birthday call from grandma and great grandma and dad, uncles, and I think that I may not be the only one that's dealing with sometimes of loneliness, right? I think it's some other people in armed forces that I've had those conversations with. So what I want to do is I'm, I think I may end up getting into the film aspect. I want to put something together where we have the intersection of uh, suicide prevention in the armed forces and then that loneliness factor from family. Right. Because you have these soldiers that's coming into the military and they're not the family because it's sometimes it can be an out of sight, out of mind type thing. You know, I'm not making excuses for the family at all, but I just I want to dive into that. And overall, I want to be the message that like, hey, call your sons, call your brothers, call your sisters, call your daughters. I, I want that to be the message because people are dealing with some serious stuff and sometimes it's leading towards suicide where it's soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, right? And, you know, those from the Coast Guard as well, where they just feel so lonely, lonely. And I, I, I want to figure something to get the message out there so that families understand that and they're reaching out and they're, you know, just making sure they're encouraging and just speaking to their family members on a daily, if not weekly basis. So I'm figuring out something in the intersection of that line. And uh, I want to get that out soon to change uh, armed forces. Yeah, I think um that's a great thing that uh and uh it seems cool that you're moving on from writing books but not going into making films. Uh second question is what would you say to the young people, male and female, about joining the military, about the current environment with all the problems the military is experiencing now? Is it a good yeah, time yeah. to join? I think it's a, a great time. Great time to join. Um uh, it's truly it's made a difference on my life. I'm not just seeing things outside of my backyard, but the people that you meet and hearing their stories and understanding like, oh, wow, you struggle just like I struggle financially, mentally, physically, you name it. Right. We all can identify with some level of struggle. So uh, and I will say that the pay, honestly, the pay is, is really good. Right. To, to, and it's, uh, I'm able to take care of my family. Um, we're, we're not missing meals. Um, and I, I will say like the leadership lessons that you learn by being in the military and just being able to overcome various situations that come across 
is uh it makes a difference. It, it really does. And uh, the discipline that you gain by being in the military, and it, I think the misconception is that it's all you know running around and shooting and doing all this like real tough guy type stuff. And that's not the case. That's not the case. We you name it in the civilian world, any of those things we have it inside the military. We have people that are able to use computers and people that drive trucks or people that deal with as cooks or they deal with different types of ammunition or they in the medical fields that we have within the military. I mean, you name it, everything that you see out there, we have within the mil in all branches of the military. So I think it's something that's good. And it's, I think it's worth it to serve the country as well. And um, I, I, I want to answer that question. So how can youth be engaged in the military? Uh, for one, I would say supporting those that are in the military. If you see somebody around you and then just telling them that you thank you for your service. I think that's something small that you could do to kind of uplift them. And everybody wants to have, wants to be noticed, right? So just tell them, hey, thank you for everything that you're doing. I think that matters because I'm, I've dealt with it as far as just being away from home and more so in those early years where you had people gone for a whole year serving in the Middle East, deployed, Afghanistan, Iraq, dangerous environments, and then coming home to sometimes children that you really don't know because you've been gone so long. Or now, you know, your your wife has really been running the household and you haven't had even any parts in that. And you're trying to adjust to get into like, hey, can I do this? It's just, it could be really, it could be really hard. Or for those people that's getting out the military to serve for 20 years and they've already done so much for our country and to go out and not be afforded the opportunities that everyone else has, it can be, that can be very difficult to manage mentally as well with the PTSD or really just different parts of your body's hurting because you've been just doing so much physically that, you know, your body's breaking down. That's not the case for everybody, but it is the case for some people. So I would say the youth can just, just by acknowledging them, I think that's, that's super, super important. I think that's uh, great information and uh, uh, and that's amazing. Um, a third question uh, from the chat is how can youth be engaged in the military? Oh yeah, that, I think that's the one. I, I actually, I stole that one out of the chat as it popped up. Um, I, I, I really jumped the gun on that one. But oh, I you kind of mixed it in? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I saw it pop up and I, I wanted to answer that one because um, I okay. am so about the military. Yeah. Um. Uh. Just to be clear, if anyone uh, wants to ask any questions, they can uh type it in the chat, and uh Captain Williams will be able to see it, so he can answer it. Uh. So I think that wraps up the Q and A. So um. Thank you, uh, Captain Williams, for joining us today. Um. I hope you, uh, everyone has a great day. Um. This is his Amazon purchase link for the book. If anyone is interested in uh getting the book, um. And yes, um, uh, Captain Williams, would you like to say anything for? Um, yeah. No. I just. I really want to give a huge shout out to PM Ready. I am providing me the opportunity. So just come on and just share these military life lessons uh, with the call. And I'm just, I'm super proud of you all for everything that you've done. And I'm just looking forward to just seeing you elevate and grow and go to the next level. And again, I'm just, I'm just, I'm so happy to be here and, and be with you all. And if you need anything from me, please don't hesitate to reach out. I, I mean, I'm here to support the every, everyone on the call. So just let me know if you need anything. Thanks again for this opportunity. Yes, yes, totally. Thank you. And I will hand it back off to Evelyn. Okay, so sorry for the background noise again. Um, so before we wrap up, I'm uh excited to tell you about our upcoming event, the 2024 Summer Virtual Camp titled Project Management for Youth. This camp is uh de designed for students entering eight to twelve, um, and is scheduled for August 12 to 23 of 2024. And, you know, here's what we can basically look forward to. You know, week one, we will engage in an 
online instructor moderating course that will lay the foundation of project management principles. So I, I don't know if you can hear me that well, but um, and then week two, we will participate in daily two hour Zoom meetings featuring um, master lecturers, a, ser a speaker series with industry leaders and dynamic discussions. Um, so to so, so yeah, sorry to secure your spot, um, uh, apply by July twelfth. Um, as space is limited. Um, for more details, um, uh, and to apply, visit pmmedi.org/slash youth camp. Um, you can also scan the barcode on the slide for quick access. Okay. Um, and then last slide. Thank you. So um, thank you all for joining us today. We hope you found um, inspiration and valuable insights from our discussions. And I know I did. Um, remember to stay connected with us through our website and social media channels for updates on future events and opportunities. So have a wonderful evening, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.